Note to self to use kind words in this video. Oh, I'm rolling. Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now I am so unbelievably excited for today's video. While the live action remakes have generally received a lot of backlash due to being heartless cash grabs of the originals, I actually think there are some hidden gems among them. So today I'm sitting down with you guys to share all my thoughts and let you know which movies are definitely worth the watch. If you were excited for today's video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you never miss magic from me. Now, for those of you who don't know, Disney has created a multitude of incredible animated movies. Their catalog is among the best for entertainment. And as of recently, they've been releasing versions of these animated movies with both live action actors and heavy CGI to create a full fantasy world that looks significantly more realistic than traditional 2D and 3D animation. Some of them have been received very, very poorly, while others have been praised for their ingenuity. And today we are going to break it all down down, and I'm going to let you know which ones are worth the watch and which ones you should totally skip out on. Now we're going to jump into some disclaimers and some conditions really quick, but if you guys want to jump right to the ranking, then you can head to this timestamp. So first and foremost of the disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company and I do not speak for the brand. This video is all just my opinions, good and bad. And secondly, I celebrate having different opinions from everyone out there, so make sure to leave your opinions down below on which of these movies is your favorite. I love connecting with everybody over Disney and talking about all of our favorite things and our not-so-favorite things, so make sure to tell me all your thoughts down below. And as for our conditions, in order to be ranked on today's list, these movies must be a remake of an originally animated Disney movie. Now, keep in mind, I will also be including on this list sequels to those live action remakes. Think Maleficent and Maleficent Mistress of Evil. Movies that I won't be including on today's list include sequels of movies that were originally live action. So you won't find Mary Poppins Returns on this list because the original movie that it's a sequel of is Mary Poppins, which is a live action movie. These movies are all just live action remakes and then sequels of those live action remakes. And as of the date that I am filming this, which is March 25th, 2024, there are quite a few live action movies that have not yet been released or given a release date. So if you're watching this in the future, the movies that will not be included on today's list are Mufasa, The Lion King, Snow White, Moana, Lilo and Stitch, Hercules, Bambi, The Sword in the Stone, Robin Hood, The Aristocats, and a third untitled Maleficent movie. Yes, that is right, we can expect 10 more live action movies, and I don't know how I feel about some of them, we'll just have to see. <laughs> and as of right now, Mufasa the Lion King, Snow White, and Moana all have release dates, but all the other movies that I listed have a release date that is to be announced, to be decided, and we're not entirely sure if we're gonna get those movies. We'll just have to see. So with all of those conditions, that leaves us with 22 movies to rank, so we got some work to do. So without further ado, let's get started and let's rank some live action Disney movies. We are first and foremost starting all the way down at the F tier. These are movies that I have no problem saying that I don't recommend them. Again, this is totally just my opinion. I don't gravitate towards these movies. I don't find a lot of enjoyment out of them and I really don't ever foresee myself re-watching them. I didn't enjoy my first experience with them and therefore I really don't see a need to have a future with them. But that being said, if you like any of these movies in the F tier, make sure to tell me down below. Let me know where you found magic in these movies. Starting out with number 22 is The Sorcerer's Apprentice, released in 2010. This movie is very roughly based on the movie Fantasia with the Sorcerer's Apprentice sequence that Mickey is in. However, when I say loosely based, I mean very loosely based because Mickey is nowhere to be found in this movie, and instead we get a whole lot of Nicolas Cage. This movie essentially just creates an entire plot of its own and seems to just be named The Sorcerer's Apprentice because there is a sorcerer and he has an apprentice. But really it bears very little resemblance to Fantasia, which is why it ranks so low. And ranking at number 21 on my list is The Jungle Book, Mowgli's Story, which was released in 1998. Now, this movie is cute, it's all right, not super memorable, definitely better than Sorcerer's Apprentice, but overall just one that I really wouldn't rewatch. The original animated movie is far superior and I will be sticking with that one. At number 20 on my list is 102 Dalmatians, released in the year 2000. Now, in this movie, I think Glenn Close's performance as Cruella is fantastic and that's about it. 
The plot doesn't do a lot for me. The overall scenery is just not my favorite. I love Glenn Close's performance of this character, but I think she does it better in another movie that's on this list. So we will get to that very soon. And the final movie ranking in the F tier is number 19, Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book, released in the year 1994. Now, oddly, I like this movie a little bit more than Mowgli's story. However, I still find this one to be very weird because now we're watching an adult Mowgli. Overall, this movie is just not one that I really gravitate towards. Watch once in a blue moon and really think everybody could just go without. Sorry. Next, we are moving on to the D tier, full of movies that I still don't really enjoy. However, they're a little bit more memorable, for better or for worse. And overall, I think they're just the tiniest step up from F tier. Again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend these, but I would recommend them a little bit more than anything in the F tier. Starting off with the first movie in our D tier, at number 18 is Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, released in 2010. Now, this movie is an absolute fever dream. There are some segments that I can't describe other than the word horrific. CGI is kind of rough in a lot of places, and it just leaves this movie feeling very uncanny valley. This movie takes Wonderland and takes it right to uncomfortable, as opposed to the original animated movie, which made Wonderland seem like a whimsical place full of fantasy. This one takes it right to Tim Burton land and makes it scary. But I understand this movie has a cult following with a lot of people that actually do enjoy it. However, this is just not my cup of tea. No pun intended. <laughs> Moving on to number 17 on my list is Pinocchio, released in the year 2022. Now, Pinocchio was... strange. I don't know. My two favorite things about this movie are First and foremost, the wall of clocks in Geppetto's workshop. If you look really closely during the clock segment where all of them are being featured, there are a lot of clocks that show other Disney movies, which I thought was such a fun idea to add in. However, in seeing the clocks that resemble other Disney movies, it made me want to instead be watching those other Disney movies. So give or take, the clocks were pretty cool, but and the other thing on my list that I absolutely loved about this movie was Cynthia Erivo as the Blue Fairy. I think her rendition of When You Wish Upon a Star was just gorgeous. I think she looks so ethereal and magnificent as this character. She absolutely killed this part, and I can't wait to see her as our future Elphaba in Wicked the movie, which isn't Disney, but I'm still excited to see it. <laughs> Besides that, Pinocchio once again falls into Uncanny Valley for me, however, not nearly as bad as Alice in Wonderland. And the final movie in our D tier at number 16 is The Lion King from 2019. Now, this movie was essentially a shot-by-shot -shot remake of the original animated movie. However, in this retelling, all of the animals are very photorealistic. There's not a whole lot of live action, it's really all just computer-generated animals, and a lot of them just feel very expressionless. 2D animation is such an incredible medium of animation because it can do so much in terms of expressions. You can create human expressions in animal characters and it's believable as opposed to doing it in 3D animation or photorealistic animation, where it just gets weird and strange. And Lion King unfortunately was on the negative side of that where it just didn't work. And I would say if you really want to watch The Lion King, I would just watch the original, in all honesty. Now, one thing I will say is I would definitely recommend listening to Beyonce sing the role of Nala, like, whoa, she killed it. But besides that, this movie doesn't do it for me. <laughs> and with that, we are moving on to the C tier. Now, these are movies that I think are all right. These movies aren't necessarily ones that I would re-watch willingly. <laughs> if somebody said to me they really, really wanted to watch them, I would like reluctantly sit down and watch them. They're not the worst. There are some good qualities about them, but I personally just don't gravitate towards them. Starting off, the C tier at number 15 is Dumbo, released in the year 2019. Now, Dumbo himself is absolutely adorable in this movie. Where with Alice in Wonderland, Tim Burton 
Tim burton all over that movie, it doesn't necessarily happen as much with Dumbo. Dumbo doesn't necessarily go all the way into the scary Tim Burton land as much as he does look cute. I will give credit where credit's due. But besides that, we're integrating human characters into the story, which yes, the ringmaster was in the original, but besides that, like, we're adding more characters who are just not memorable, don't serve the best story in the movie, and I would just watch the animation if you really want to watch Dumbo. At number 14 on my list is the sequel to Alice in Wonderland, Alice Through the Looking Glass, which was released in the year 2016. Now, the reason why this movie ranks higher than Alice in Wonderland is because it's not a direct copy of an animated movie. Alice Through the Looking Glass had the liberties of creating its own storyline. And yes, it is based on the Lewis Carroll book. However, there isn't an original Disney animated movie to directly compare to it. And so Alice Through the Looking Glass, the live action movie, really feels like its own thing. So while yes, there is still some Uncanny Valley and there is still some creepy Tim Burton vibe to it, I separate it from the original Alice in Wonderland Disney animation because it's not a direct retelling of a Disney animated movie. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if I'm making sense there. But anyways, I do prefer this one to live action Alice in Wonderland. And the final movie in our C tier. Now yes, the lower tiers are significantly smaller. I do have larger higher up tiers because separating these movies for me was was a lot easier than like the animated movies and the Pixar movies. For some reason, I can just look at this list and say, here's a hard cutoff, here's a hard cutoff, here's a hard cutoff. <laughs> but regardless, the final member of the C tier and at number 13 on my list is Christopher Robin, which was released in the year 2018. Now, this movie I really did enjoy the plot of because it is based off of Winnie the Pooh, but it's not one of the movies that I directly watch and say, oh, this follows the plot exactly. Like, there is some adult Christopher Robin. There are other elements that separate this one from animated Winnie the Pooh. So yes, I can sort of look at this as its own thing, but the one thing that I don't really love is the way that Pooh and his friends are brought to life. They very much look like the older, rather beat up versions of the plush animals, like what original Winnie the Pooh looked like. And while yes, that is special to a lot of people, that didn't resonate with me personally. My favorite iteration of Pooh Bear is the animation where he is bright yellow and has a bright red shirt. And to see a weird like inanimate plush doll come to life was just a little bit strange to me. I prefer to think of Pooh as an actual bear like he's shown in the animation. But regardless, again, that is just my opinion. And with that, we are gonna move on to the B tier. Now the B tier is full of movies that I could see myself watching again. However, not as a frequent watcher. I would say I would maybe revisit these movies like once every two to three years, maybe. They're not necessarily bad. They're just not favorites of mine. The B tier to me just kind of exists. At number 12 is Peter Pan and Wendy, which was released very recently in the year 2023. Now, Peter Pan and Wendy was okay. I really did enjoy Yara Shahidi's version of Tinkerbell. I thought she brought a lot of personality to that role. But overall, again, it gave me vibes of the original, but I still prefer the original. Anywho, we move on to number 11, which is 101 Dalmatians, which was released in 1996. Now, this movie was Glenn Close's first attempt at Cruella de Vil, and oh my god, does she blow this character out of the water. If you watch this movie at all, you must watch it for Glenn Close because she is so unbelievably perfect in this role. She is all of the elements of Cruella that are funny and scary and just zany and crazy. She truly breathes life into the character. And she is the sole reason that this reaches B tier because the rest of the movie is, it's all right. It's not my favorite, but she blows this movie out of the water. She is just incredible. And the final movie in our B tier is number 10 on our list, Lady and the Tramp, released in the year 2019. Now, I liked this movie and I enjoyed it. I thought the dogs were absolutely adorable. However, any emotional attachment that I have to this movie strictly comes from the original animated movie. Because I love that one so much, I sort of found the magic in the live action one because of my love for the original. And overall, I think it was relatively well done. You know, production value was up there. I think the production team did a good job with this one. I. I would revisit this one. Alrighty, and with that, we are moving on to the biggest tier on today's list, the A tier. Now, these are the live action movies that I enjoy. Let me put it this way. I am content with their existence. <laughs> By saying that I like these movies, I 
in no way prefer these versions to the original animation. However, to me, the existence of these movies in the A tier doesn't hinder the original animation. Basically, I'm fine with them existing. I'd revisit them like maybe once a year. All things considered, they're pretty good. Starting off with number nine on my list is The Jungle Book, released in the year 2016. Now, this movie did a really good job of establishing environment. I believe that we are in the jungle and I believe that Mowgli is interacting with all of these animals. Now, this is just a little fun fact about me. I am like deathly afraid of snakes. So I had to close my eyes through the majority of Scarlett Johansson's performance as Ka. But in terms of her voice, I think she did a fantastic job. And I want to give a shout out to Neil Sethi, who is an absolutely incredible Mowgli. He captured my attention fully and absolutely brought home this movie. Next, we're moving on up to number eight on my list, which is Maleficent, released in the year 2014. Now, whoever came up with the casting decision to make Angelina Jolie the live-action Maleficent... Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> This was incredible casting. However, I don't like the fact that she isn't green. <laughs> I admittedly much prefer the original animated character's design over the costuming that took place in the live action movie. So while I love Jolie's performance of the character, I wish she looked more like the animated version. And the other thing I will say as to why Maleficent ranks lower in the A tier for me is that this movie's existence relies on the fact that the original animator in the 1959 Sleeping Beauty movie was not reliable, which I don't necessarily like shutting down the original animated movie in order to make this movie. I would have much preferred the Sleeping Beauty story from Maleficent's point of view, and I also have to say I am not a fan of the fact that she is not the dragon in this movie. It is actually her pet raven, Diavol, which I don't know why they renamed it Diavol when Diablo is not that different. But anyways, I love the production value on this movie. I think the movie looks stunning. Elle Fanning as Aurora is wonderful. And overall, there are just minor things that if tweaked, I could have made it a lot higher on this list. Next, we move on to number seven on my list, which is the live action Mulan, released in the year 2020. Now, Mulan is literally everything that I wanted from a live action version of Mulan, except the fact that there's no music in this movie. Yes, there's under Screen, but none of the original songs that we know and love so much are in this movie. Like, how can you have a Mulan without reflection? Reflection is just so amazing, and I think it was detrimental to this movie to not have the original music. I also don't like the fact that we don't have a Mushu, and instead we have this, like, phoenix, which doesn't have a voice or a personality or any sort of comedy like Mushu did. I do like the character of the witch. I don't have a problem with her replacing Shan Yu, and I thought that was a really interesting dynamic to have the witch versus Mulan. But overall, what ranks this movie so low is just the lack of music. Like, that hurts. <laughs> but anyways, we move on to number six on my list, which is Aladdin, released in the year 2019. Now, I have some things to say about Aladdin. There are so many things about this movie that I truly love. I think Naomi Scott as Jasmine is fantastic. I know she got some heat coming into casting because she didn't look enough the part, but for whatever she didn't look the part, she acted the heck out of it, and she sang that part so incredibly well. Now, Mina Masood as Aladdin was okay. He looks the part very, very much so, and he does get the audience invested in him, so... I applaud him on that. Now, Will Smith as the genie was definitely a much different approach to this character. I think any actor having to face the obstacle that is trying to bring to life a character that was originated by Robin Williams has a lot of work on their plate and also has a lot of things working against them. Robin Williams was such a legend, and the genie is easily one of his most iconic roles. So for what Will Smith had and what he did with the role, I applaud him. Was it better than Robin Williams? Not in my opinion, but he did a good job. In all honesty with this movie, after the song Prince Ali, which is the big parade number where Aladdin comes into the city, everything that takes place after that song I really like and really, really enjoy in this movie. Everything from the Prince Ali song and before that 
really just feels like we're reminding people, oh, do you remember? This was the plot of the original one. Do you remember that? And like, again, it's not bad, but again, I think the energy really, really picked up after the song Prince Ali. Because that's when the movie also took risks and did its own thing and established itself as different from the original animation. Overall, I have a lot of really good things to say about this movie, so... Yeah, that's Aladdin. And with that, we move on to the final movie in the A tier, which is number five on my list, the live action Beauty and the Beast, released in the year 2017. Now, Beauty and the Beast did a lot right. It also did a lot wrong. <laughs> I think what this movie does so wonderfully is establish environment. Everything in this movie is visually stunning. If you were to show me screen grabs of this movie throughout the entire movie, set them down on a big poster board and say, this is going to be the live action Beauty and the Beast, I would be through the roof ecstatic. Minus the Emma Watson yellow dress. That was, I was not a fan of that dress. Not at all. However, where I would say this movie falters is its undying attempt to correct the plot holes of the original movie. When we're watching the original movie, people often figure out that the Beast's age, he had to be around 10 years old when the Enchantress cursed him. And so people were like, why is she cursing a 10 year old? And so that was changed in this version. We also have unnecessary explanations that not every enchanted item in the Beast's castle has a human equivalent, which I didn't know why that was necessary. I didn't think every single dancing fork and napkin had a human counterpart. But yeah, I think a lot of strange and unnecessary story elements were brought in. The one thing I do like that this movie did was give Belle's mother a backstory. But besides that, a lot of the changed story plot points I didn't really love. Oh, and Gaston being a war veteran, why are we making him a sympathetic character? He's supposed to be like incredibly evil. And in my opinion, in this movie, the beast just isn't as likable as he is in the original animated. Oh, and I will die on this hill. I think Emma Watson was auto-tuned way too much. I think her original voice was acceptable. Like, she sounds okay, and all of this auto-tune that was added on top of her just makes her sound robotic. Especially when not a lot of other people in this movie were auto-tuned as much as her. So yeah, I like this movie. I enjoy it. I like the opulence of it. However, I have a lot of problems with the story alterations that were made. But again, in terms of only the visuals, that's why this movie ranks at number five on my list. And with that, we have reached the S tier. These are live action movies that I really, really like. I think while not necessarily better than the original movie, I am really glad that these versions of the movie exist because it gives us as Disney fans the nostalgic feeling of the original while also being something different. These movies make a lot of different choices or have a lot of different plot points that just feel fresh and new, and frankly, that elevate the original story. Again, not that I like these movies better, but they do add a level of complexity that makes them interesting. For the first movie in my S tier at number four is Cinderella, released in the year 2015. Now this movie is opulent. They spared no expense in going all out and giving us the most elevated, fairy tale experience that you could possibly imagine in a live action movie. Everything is so ornate and stunning and the production value on this movie is truly like top tier. I think Lily James gives an incredible performance as Cinderella and I really liked Richard Madden's Prince Kit. I think it added a lot to the prince's personality which we don't get a lot of in the original animated movie and it really establishes a connection between Cinderella and the prince that would make us root for them to end up together more at the end. I also really enjoy Kate Blanchett's performance as Lady Tremaine. I think she knocked it out of the park. And I really like the interaction that Cinderella and Lady Tremaine have at the very end, right after Cinderella has fit the slipper and she's ready to be brought away, where she turns to her and she sort of confronts her a little bit and makes her feel bad for everything that she did to her throughout the movie. While I do miss the songs from the original animated movie, like A Dream Is Wish Your Heart Makes and So This Is Love, of, I do think the amount of material that was added in order to create a more complex story definitely evens out my level of disappointment with the lack of original songs. So I, I am okay with it. I am okay with it. This movie added enough to the point where I would have liked the original songs, but I, I, I can do without. So overall, I would rank this one an S tier. I would definitely rewatch this one often enough. Still not better than the original animated movie, but 
I do like it quite a bit. And at number three on my list is 2019's Maleficent, The Mistress of All Evil. Now, this one I really enjoyed. And I think the reason, this might be cheating a little bit, I think the reason why I really like this movie is that it bears little to no resemblance at all to the original Sleeping Beauty. It very much feels like an original story where there are three main protagonists having completely brand new storyline to navigate. And they just so happen to be named Maleficent, Princess Aurora, and Prince Philip. It especially differentiates itself because this Aurora in this movie is swinging from balcony to balcony on different ropes and just very, very different from what you would imagine animated Aurora to be doing. Maleficent also finds the dark fae who are just like her and that adds a level of complexity that I associate little to nothing with the original animation. I think this movie is really just an original fairy tale plot that Disney created and I, I really like it. But I think that's just in my own head where I can very easily separate and distinguish the animated characters from the live action ones. Like these do not feel like the same characters to me. Now, if my brain established that connection between live action and animation a little bit more, I don't know if I would like it as much, but because I see them as so completely different, I really like this movie. All right, we've reached the top two. Any guesses as to which movies are gonna make it? Leave down in the comments which one you think is gonna be at number one. See if you get it right before I tell you. But we are moving on to number two on my list, which is 2021's Cruella. Now, this movie was such a wonderful and perfect origin story for the character of Cruella. Again, because it doesn't directly correlate to the events of the original 101 Dalmatians, I think I like this one a lot more. Emma Stone as Cruella is wonderful, wonderful casting. She killed this role. I loved the fashion moments and I loved Emma Thompson's character. Oh my God, the two of them. I love a battle between two strong female characters. Yeah, everything about this movie just felt like so much of a perfect origin story for a villain who is so iconic that we all know and love. I also have to say, and while this movie doesn't share any songs with the original animation besides a little Cruella de Vil song like played on the piano at the very, very end, the soundtrack for this movie is amazing. It is banger after banger after banger, every single song. I just, whenever one comes on, I'm like, oh yeah, go on Cruella. <laughs> I think the music that was added to this movie just absolutely elevates the story. And it shows the humble beginnings of a very villainous character who may not be as villainous as we think she is. Overall, I would definitely recommend watching this one at least once. And while the climactic moment of the movie is a little bit far-fetched with the whole parachute, I can get over that because of how incredible the rest of this movie is. I have very, very little bad to say about this movie, and I definitely recommend this movie for the characters, the fashion, the music, and the plotline. And at number one, did you guess what it was? I think you guys already knew. At number one is the live action Little Mermaid released in the year 2023. Now, I think you all know by now that I am very biased to the original 1989 Little Mermaid. And so going into theaters and watching this movie, I was worried. Because I loved the original so much, I wanted this version to live up to the original animation. And for me, it absolutely did. I loved this version so much. And I think it added a lot to the plot line. Having Ariel not remember the fact that she needs to get the kiss from Prince Eric adds a level of complexity to this entire deal that she made with Ursula. I think the new songs are absolutely incredible, minus the scuttlebutt. I am not a fan of the scuttlebutt. But Wild Uncharted Waters, sung by Jonah Howard King, is wonderful. Melissa McCarthy is such a fun Ursula. I think she did this role so wonderfully. I think Javier Bardem as King Triton was absolutely magnetic. He did a wonderful job. All of Ariel's sisters looked so so incredible in this movie. Like when I saw Ariel's sisters floating down in the throne room, my jaw was on the ground. My God, they all looked spectacular. But the thing that I am absolutely most happy to say about this movie is that Halle Bailey is the perfect Ariel that we could have possibly gotten. Halle truly understands the character of Ariel. And if you don't believe me, 
Jody Benson herself, the original Ariel, has said the very same thing. Whereas the original Little Mermaid has the song Part of Your World as this inner monologue expressing everything that Ariel wants and sets her up perfectly to go after what she wants, Halle Bailey's version feels like such a desperate plea to get everything that she wants. And, oh my god, it is just heart-wrenching. I can't listen to Halle Bailey's version of Part of Your World without shedding tears. Halle's voice is just perfect for this music. The new song that was added for her for the first time has such a fun beat and honestly really mirrors the song Part of Your World. Drawing comparisons to a lot of things, like seeing the fire under the water in a painting and wanting to see it versus actually seeing it in person. Introducing the idea that the humans actually do eat fish when she sees the painting up on the wall. Very interesting commentary on that. And again, if you guys have seen my ranking every single Disney animated movie video, I said that when Ariel enters into this movie and she is on screen, she is absolutely magnetic and I can't look away. And I am so happy to report that I feel exactly the same when watching Halle Bailey's version of Ariel. So in all honesty, this movie sits directly parallel with the 1989 animated version for me. And I, I know this sounds cheesy, but I am just so happy to live in a world where this movie exists. I love it. I love it so, so, so much. And now that I've actually talked about it, I can remove that because that would have been a massive spoiler. <laughs> yes, I am crazy and have a full Halle Bailey collection. Um, I still need to put this together. I might make a video on my Little Mermaid collection. Let me know if you guys are interested in that. But I am actually headed to Disney World at the very beginning of April, and I am very excited because I just got these live action Ariel ears, so I cannot wait to wear these around the park. These are gonna be so fun to bring around with me. Anyways, I was getting off into a tangent. This is absolutely my favorite live action movie of all time, and I am so unbelievably grateful that the love and care was put into it because this one is so deeply personal to me. And with that, we have reached the end of my ranking of every single Disney live action remake. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about all of these incredible movies. Now, if you're interested in seeing my full ranking of the Disney animated movies, I'm going to link a playlist right up here, which is all of my Disney rankings. And like I said a little bit ago, I will be in Disney for a few days at the beginning of April. So I am very much looking forward to getting some footage and maybe putting together a a tiny little mini vlog. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. We'll, we'll see. Let me know if you guys want to see that down below. But again, thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun. I am so grateful that you guys are loving these ranking videos so, so, so much. That means the world to me. You have no idea. But until next time, have a magical rest of your day, and I will see you all real soon.